dx dt and this right here really doesn't quite matter it's just a fun little fact you can get to you can gay <laughs> you can go to your anal professor gay and anal in the same sentence i'm terribly sorry <laughs> there was a little slippery tonguey slip up Good morning fellow mathematicians, welcome back to another video. Today I would like to prove a little fact that I have used in one of my videos. It was about the radius of convergence of the natural log Taylor series video. We are going to show that our harmonic series, a little Seda boy you could say, diverges. Okay, what exactly is the harmonic series? Well, it's nothing but Seda of one. And we have derived this delicious integral identity right here last time around. <laughs> Like so fucking good. Being equal to, well, the basic definition of the Riemann Seda function. I still can draw the Seda very well. I'm terribly sorry, my boys and girls out there. So let's take a look at Seda of 1. We know that this is equal by definition to the harmonic series. We are going to denote it by capital H. Also, it's equal to, well, just S being equal to 1 right here. Sum from K equals to 1 to infinity of well 1 over k and also it's equal to well this chunk right here just um, with one plugged into here so that's gamma of 1 that's 0 factorial that's just 1 so we have negative integral from 0 to 1 of integral from 0 to 1 natural log of x times t to the okay 1 minus 2 is negative 1 power over 1 minus x times t dx dt and this right here really doesn't quite matter it's just a fun little fact you can get to you can gay. <laughs> you can go to your anal professor, gay and anal in the same sentence. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> there was a little slippery tonguey slip up, and you can go to your anal professor and say, "Oh, bruh, 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 this thing diverges." Just because this diverges. Okay, that's what we are going to show today. That our harmonic series actually diverges. It's pretty easy to show. I'm going to do it Papa's way because, well, it nicely visualizes you um, that this thing diverges. No, not really visualizes, but it's a nice and neat little proof. It's kind of a standard proof, but I modified it just a little bit so that you can see it a bit better why it actually di diverges. Okay, um, we are going to take a look at the partial sums of the harmonic series. We are going to denote the sequence by h with a little n down here. And it's, well, just consisting of the partial sums. So from k equals to 1 to n, in this case, n up here, of 1 over k. And you might notice if we let n go to infinity, we are actually going to arrive at h, okay, in the limit. That does work out. Also, I want you guys to consider the fact, it really doesn't quite matter if we let n, a natural number, go to infinity. That's countably infinite you could say that's just a countable infinity or what we can do we can take a look at n's of the form 2 to the p of power where p is element of natural numbers okay if we let this go to infinity this p then we are also just going to end up with the same infinity you could say and we're going to arrive at our h right here our harmonic series i just want you guys to recognize this fact this right here makes it really easy to show that this thing actually diverges okay p is not supposed to be a prime number here even though they are element of natural numbers so p can be a prime number but we don't care about that i want to take a look at a few little examples now okay just a little partial sum observation we're going to take a look at our partial sum of the harmonic series where n is equal to 2 squared, for example. Okay, let's take h 2 squared. Then it's the sum running from 1 to 4 right here. So that's 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third plus 1 quarter. I want you guys to recognize another little fact. We want to find some estimates, you can say, some boundaries. We want to show that this thing right here in the limit is unbounded. So let's find, for example, a lower bound right now. A little lower bound just. Okay. One third. I hope you agree with me that one third is indeed strictly greater than one fourth because you can multiply both sides by three and four to arrive at four being greater than three in the natural numbers that indeed holds. PR axioms and shit, okay? So this thing is actually strictly greater 
because of this part right here, then one plus one half plus one quarter plus one quarter. One quarter plus one quarter is two over four. That's one half, okay? That's nothing but one plus one half plus one half. Yeah, this is two, but I want to write it in a little bit different way. This is nothing but one plus two over two. That's a little bit of a bad example because well, two popping up here three times if you put this together and shit. But I want you guys to recognize the fact that our P that we had right here being two is nothing but this number up here. You are going to see in the next example that this indeed holds. So we're going to end up with basically one plus P over two. One more time this whole process such that you can see it a bit better, okay? We are going to get, for example, for Hn, where n is nothing but 2 cubed. Okay, let's put it like this. H of 2 cubed. It's a sum running from 1 to 8, so we get 1. Once again, this thing right here is strictly greater than 1 fourth. What other boundaries can we find? Well, I want you guys to recognize that 1 fifth is indeed strictly greater than 1 eighth just by the same reasoning we did right here, okay? That's strictly greater than 1 8. 1 6th, strictly greater than 1 8. You might have noticed 1 7th, strictly greater than 1 8. If we apply those boundaries, we're going to get, okay, we know that this is going to vary to 1 half, so this is 1 plus 1 half, plus 1 half. This is 4 times 1 8. 4 over 8 is 1 half. Overall, this makes 1 plus 3 over 2. Ah, <laughs> maybe you notice our boy, the number 3 right here is up here. So that's once again 1 plus p over 2. And you can probably prove it by induction that this approximation, this estimation holds for all natural numbers p right here. Meaning, <laughs> Our hn is always strictly greater than 1 plus p over 2, okay? This is something we can observe. You can try it out for 1 16th and we are going to get that this is strictly greater than, uh, um, not 1 16th, um, hn where n is equal to 2 to the 4th power, okay, I'm terribly sorry. Then you can easily see that it's once again 1 plus 4 over 2 greater than 1 plus 4 over 2. So we always have this of the form, okay? And if we now let p go to infinity, okay, hn is of the form 2 to the pth power. Once again, in the limit, that is going to go to h, but also, this is always strictly greater than the limit as p approaches infinity of 1 plus p over 2 in this case. Well, limit of this constant right here really doesn't quite matter. And well, p to infinity, that's infinity over 2. Basically, this is infinity. So this shit goes to infinity. So what we have found out that our h right here, our harmonic series, is well, strictly greater than infinity, meaning it's unbounded. So something bigger than infinity is still infinity. So this thing actually diverges in the limit. Meaning if this diverges, this integral representation also diverges somewhere to infinity. And this is basically it. So yeah, this is our um, harmonic series boy right here. And it plays a big role in analytical number theory, especially when it comes to the oily mac macaroni constant, oily macaroni constant whatsoever, whatever you pronounce it, however you pronounce it, never mind. So yeah, this is basically it as always. That's a nice and easy proof and I hope it made perfect sense to you guys. You can choose any all n right here, but with this way, um, yeah, you can easily see that in the limit it goes to infinity. So yeah, just because you have this distinct variable right here in this estimation. Yeah, you are basically summing up a lot of things which go to infinity in the limit. I thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe and recommend channel if you like, if you want to support channel a bit more.
take a look into the description there. You can buy those t-shirts I created or you can support the channel on Patreon. Take a look at my second channel. I love you guys. Appreciate you and up until the next video. Have a flammable day. See ya. Good morning fellow mathematicians. Um, welcome back. So as you might notice we are doing some Python once again and here I'm a filthy piece of crap because I'm still using Python 2.7. I'm terribly sorry. I just don't care about upgrading this thing right here. And once again Python and after that Desmos to show you that it actually diverges those partial sums. So we are now going to create something new. No, not, not open something. We're going to create a new file. Okay. And what you want to do, at first you want to give this thing a name. So we are going to define ourselves this harmonic series. And you know our partial sums went to n right here. So harm of n, we are going to define it as follows. So at first we need to have a little value being equal to zero. So h being equal to zero, okay? And then we are going to let our running index go up over time. So what we definitely want to do, we want to set for k, that was our running index, in range. Um, now you have to pay attention, not from zero. If you start from zero, then you're going to divide by zero. That, that won't be any good. So in range 1 to n plus 1 in this case. Oh, and as you might notice, I'm having a new microphone right here, and I hope it sounds pretty good. I can even do ASMR with it. So if you want to hear some sexy Riemann hypothesis ASMR, then let me know in the comments, my boys and girls. So yeah, this right here is our running index, and how are we going to define our h? Well, we are going to add to it the next member of this sequence right here. So 1 over, and I'm going to give it a float value, 1 over k in this case, because that's our running index. For little checking purposes, we are going to print it, uh, print our h, and we want to return our h then. So once again, we want to set an integer input, because we can't really do a sum running from 1 to 3 to 5, so we need an integer input of um, yeah number of iterations. Okay, closing off those brackets. And then all that's really left to do is to print our harm of A in this case. Okay, and here it goes. So we can let it run. Harmonic. I'm going to put it on my desktop. And let's see if it works out. So number of iterations, one. Okay, this, this is going to give us one, obviously. It seems to work. So let's do three, for example. Oh, I put in two. I'm terribly sorry, I'm using my mouse to put in the numbers. Yeah, this works out, so I can get rid of the print stuff right here. So let it run once again. And why not go up to 1000 this time? Okay, you see it's going to increase. You can check that the sequence does indeed monotonically increase. And now we are going to let it run once again up until, I don't know, 1 million, for example. Is this a million? Yeah, 14 dot something. You see this is going to go really slowly to infinity, but it's going to diverge. Now we are going to take a look at Desmos right here, exactly, and we are going to define our sequence. I use this once again because I couldn't really get a hang of how to um, put this graphing into here. I'm so stupid when it comes to Desmos. Um, my girlfriend just came in. Lisa, hello. <laughs> Okay, um, we are going to use the sum right here. The index would be kind of wrong in this case from 1 to n. Those are our partial sums of 1 over k. Okay, and there it goes, I guess. Yeah, here we are. This right here is our graph up until, oh, I zoomed out a bit, up until 100 iterations. So we can do it um, up until 10,000, for example. Yeah, this should also work out. So you see, it's going to grow really, really slow, just like with the um, with the logarithm. Those were too many iterations, it seems. That's quite weird. Oh yeah, it doesn't have a very high tolerance. And now I could do something quite nice and put in the natural log, for example, in. But I'm going to. Uh, keep this for a different video because we are going to talk about the oily macaroni constant soon. So that's going to be quite amazing. I think guys watching, if you did enjoy this video, please like, subscribe, recommend the channel if you like. You know what you can do to support the channel. And I just came back from the shower. That's why I'm looking a bit fucked. And now until the next video, have flamble day then. See ya.
Hey, you look this one.